Today's video is about Ethiopian wellow opal. Wellow opal is among the most beautiful types of opal, and the best wellow opal is on par with the best opals found anywhere else in the world. And listen up. I'm not going to get into an argument about whose opal is best, Australian or Ethiopian. You know that I love Australian opal, but I don't have a dog in this fight. And if you guys want to have a pissing contest, do it on your own time. I've got work to do. Sheila, would you stop that? Ethiopian opal is hydrophane, meaning that it absorbs water and becomes clear. The Ethiopian opal is marked with an E and the Australian with an A. Once it's taken out of water, it slowly becomes white, and the white color persists for between one and five days. These are freshly cut, wet opal cabochons. Within a few hours, they become white. Then, two or three days later, they've almost regained their final color. They'll get a little more clear than this. If I want to make a cabochon for some jewelry out of Australian opal, all I have to do is put it in water, and I can see the color, I can see the grades, I can see the size. All I have to do is pull one out and start working on it. But can you do that with Ethiopian? The answer is no. If I take the rough opal, I get some idea about what's inside, but, you know, it doesn't always come out like you think it's going to come out. And what happens if I put it in water? If I put it in water, it disappears. So I can't treat Ethiopian rough like I do Australian rough. I can't wet it. So what do you do? Well, what I do is I pull in my working rough. These were all rough nodules that I made as large as possible and smoothed the surface and polished them so that I can see what I'm gonna get. This is a pretty nice piece of Ethiopian opal. And if you think because it's Ethiopian opal, we don't have to deal with sand, properly called matrix, well, think again. It's got sand, and it's just as troublesome in Ethiopian opal as it is in Australian opal. Cutting Ethiopian opal like this is pretty much like cutting Australian opal. But cutting dry is actually preferred by a surprising number of Ethiopian opal cutters. I mean, mostly the ones who want silicosis, but... Well, this is a pretty nice stone. It's got great color. 24 hours it's white, then five days later it's pretty much to normal. The less you pay for Ethiopian opal, the more cracks you get, but fortunately you can identify the cracks quickly. I think I can just pull it apart right there. There it is. It goes to there. So this should pop right off. I should be able to pop these two apart. There it is. This is a five gram piece of double A opal. Because it's got such a thick layer of sand, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put my mask on, I'm gonna turn on the exhaust fan, open the vents, and do this one dry. So let's put this thing on. Let's see how it does dry. That's how dedicated I am to you guys. Bunch of wankers. My neighbors will be making their appointments with their pulmonologist very soon. Teach them to mess with me. I got a 3.78 carat stone out of this and, well, maybe it will be good for a giveaway, do you think? 
It's a very nice nodule of Ethiopian opal. Very nice. Very bright, brilliant colors. The problem here is that we have some cracks near the surface, near the right end of this thing. And so I had to cut off the nose of it. I hate when we cut off the nose. But without a nose, it still looks good, in my opinion. This is what rough Ethiopian opal looks like when you buy it, or if you mine it. It comes in nodules of variable size. Generally, the larger the nodule, the more you'll pay per gram or per ounce, with the presumption that larger nodules produce larger stones, but that's not necessarily the case. Like every product in nature, from eggs to corn to coffee, lumber, crude oil, everything is graded, and the same holds true for Ethiopian opal. You pay more for better quality, and you pay less if you don't need good quality. The grades of Ethiopian opal are triple A, double A, A, B, and mine run. I'm not going to get into the details as to what are the qualities of these different grades, but suffice it to say, triple A Ethiopian <laughs> opal is rare and is very expensive. Double A is good and is in the range of $500 to $1,000 an ounce at this time. I noticed in looking at it that the back is, to me, more colorful than the front. And my, my goal is to make it thinner and hopefully get down into a little bit better material. So now you can see that I've, I've made the ends a little pointier. This end is still pointier. And this has more curvature. It's a little cloudy because it's still drying out. You know, I think most people would be satisfied with a stone like this. But when I see how good the back is, I can't help but... Uh, I'm going to go a little bit thinner, then I'm going to polish it, and we'll see where we stand. Thinner now. You can see that the Nova wheels have torn up my gloves pretty good. Disaster has struck. This stone developed terrible cracks, basically ruining it as a large cabochon. This event occurred about five years ago, and it taught me a huge lesson about Wello Opal. What went wrong? Well, here's the evidence. The stone was wet from having been cut. It's a little cloudy because it's still drying out. I'm not sure why I decided to then cut it dry, but I did. So what happened? Well, when the surface of a recently cut opal is smooth, polished, water can only escape slowly because the surface area is small. This frosted surface looks cool, but the surface area of a rough specimen is up to five times greater than that of a polished surface. This allows water trapped inside to escape rapidly, shocking the stone and causing it to crack. Hey Siri, what is the world's record for Rubik's Cube? Here's what I found from GadgetsNow.com. The current Guinness World Record for a Rubik's Cube solved by a robot is 0 0.637 seconds. Hey Siri, what is the world's record for a Rubik's Cube set by a human? Here's what I found from GuinnessWorldRecords.com. The fastest time to solve a 3x3x3 rotating puzzle cube is 3.47 seconds by Yesheng Du, China. 3.47 seconds is fast. I've never done one of these, but I'm a pretty quick learner. But they say you have to scramble it thoroughly first. So let's scramble it. Scrambled. I'm going to start the stopwatch. Sheila, you got it? Okay. Three, two, one. I did it on my first try. This thing's easy. You guys don't really know about Sheila, so I'm here to set you straight. When I was selling opal jewelry on eBay a few years back, people complained that they couldn't see how big my pendants were. And I gave them the measurements and had a photograph in each listing showing the item sitting on top of a U.S. quarter. I mean, the quarter is the most popular U.S. coin, and 99% of my customers were in the U.S., but they continued to complain despite the quarter, so I decided... I needed a neck model. Well, my daughter was away at college, and my sons refused the job. Bunch of slackers. Now my wife, my wife has a lovely neck. I mean, beautiful and talented, too. But jewelry models that I saw online were, well, 
different. I mean, I did have the option to get a new wife, but they're so hard to train. And well, who would be foolish enough to take the job, right? Don't answer that. So I started looking into the dummy market. And oh, I'm not talking about Match.com. I'm talking about eBay and Amazon. And thanks to two-day prime delivery, I soon got to meet Sheila. I remember her inside that dark box, peering shyly at me through those plastic pillows. And I knew right then that she was special. Sheila went on to have an enormously successful modeling run on eBay for Pulitzer Opal. But suddenly, her career was over. Because I closed up shop on eBay and I moved to YouTube. So I had to send Sheila back to her box in shame. But then one day, I learned that all of the YouTube Opal channels were bringing in attractive assistants to uh, <clears throat> bring more interest to their videos. That's when I decided to unbox Sheila and make her my YouTube assistant. Down goes Sheila. Oh. The humanity. Since then, Sheila's become a valued member of the Pulitzer Opal team. Both of us are. But I'm sorry to say that my wife thinks that Sheila makes me look like some sort of a pervert. Me, a pervert. Well, now that you've heard the entire Sheila story, you know that she's a valued team member, and I'm not a pervert. Not a pervert. Sheila's a great assistant, despite, well, you know, the, the arm thing. But... She doesn't eat much, she's a good listener, and she is great in the sack. Today's video is sponsored by John Young of EthiopiaOpals.com Steve Newstrom of VillageSmithyOpals.com and Ernest Alafita of Apex Opals on Instagram. I will put this information in the description if I remember to do it. I was promised some AAA Opal for this video, but unfortunately it didn't arrive in time. But I thought to myself, I don't need no stinking AAA Opal. I can save the AAA Opal for another video, right? I mean, my philosophy on sponsors is give till it hurts and then give some more, if you know what I mean. We didn't have a winner from several videos ago, the Picture Jasper video, so we have to give this one away again. And the winner is Carolyn Nooney. Who knew me that she would win? The outpouring of love over the blue IP just set my heart aflutter. That was all pretend. You just wanted my opals. I know it. And the winner of the blue IP? Liz and Dave's Adventures. The winner of the Brazilian opal named Karen is... Amanda McCarthy. After my next video, we will be giving away the 3.78 carat Ethiopian opal. And here are the rules. This video took me an enormous amount of time because I have so much footage of video cutting Ethiopian opal. Next time, it'll come out quicker. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.